so hopefully it will flow a little bit easier. There we go. For some reason, I get more oil leaks on German cars than anything else. Any moment now. Here it is. So it's a fantastic Saturday. The BMW is done in terms of, we've got an alignment done on it. Those rear arms are done. I need to still do the electrical issue. I'll do that this week. But uh, today it's time to go back and work on the Audi, on the uh, RS5. So the plan for today is actually to go and flush that transmission fluid. That's really important. I'll explain a bit when I get to the workshop, but it is really important to, to actually flush that. And from there, we're gonna have some fun and actually uh, be able to do some launches, I hope. So really looking forward to that one. I might have a little bit of a play in the wet, but obviously 10 year old tires and the wet do not mix. So if I was going to, I'd find a nice big open area. The rate things are going with these two cars, it won't be long before they're completely up to snuff and we can start improving them as opposed to just maintaining them to get them reliable. Not that they weren't reliable before. Okay, M5 might have been a little bit unreliable in some degrees, like with rod bearings, consumable rod bearings. What, what, what? All right, so we'll jump into it in a minute, but why do we care? Why do we want to change a transmission fluid? It's only got 28,000 miles on the clock. That seems a bit excessive. Well, it turns out the Audi RS5 actually had a few issues with the ECB boards actually inside that transmission itself. Early on, they were replacing entire transmissions when you would get this malfunction. What it actually turned out was the PCB was failing. Changing the oil as a preventative measure will actually make the PCB last longer. Now, of course, if the PCB does fail, there are kits out there now, so it's not the end of the world if we had to replace that. I just want to make sure we don't spend that money if we don't need to and go ahead and actually replace the oil. So the basic plan is we're going to remove some of the shields. It's going to reveal the transmission pan. We're going to undo the transmission pan and drop that. Obviously, after we've drained the transmission oil or as much of it as possible. And then from there, we're going to replace the filter, the external filter, seals, gaskets, and put it all back together. It's really important though to get the right volume of oil. And so we'll find out the best way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can just remove this cover and get away with it without having to remove this one too, but we'll see. The first and easiest fasteners to remove are actually these plastic ones back here. So you take like an upholstery tool for these grommets, slide it in and it should just pop out. So from there, with those removed, there are now three T27s back here. There's one there, another one was just there, and then finally in the center, there was a third. I'm gonna remove this and we'll see what, how far we get. Not very. Okay, so those have to come out by the look of it, at least those. And they are the triple square bits. Again, last video had kind of a description about those. So I've actually gone ahead and removed them, but it doesn't look like you need to. So if you just loosen them, that shield should just then come out, revealing almost everything we need. But there are some fasteners for that subframe, unfortunately, underneath this shield. So I'll go ahead and take that one off. So with that out of the way, this reveals the subframe brace here where you've got a, I think that's a 14, a triple square size 14. Then you've got 18 millimeter bolts. So I need to go ahead and remove those. However, before I do that, I'm actually gonna free up this cable. So you can see here where the cable comes through the subframe. So I want to take care of that first. And then it looks like another attachment up there. Now, unfortunately, I can't push it through from this side over here, so I'm gonna to have to go ahead and lever it up the top. I can use the same tool I used earlier. Maybe. There we go. That one works. This one 
is at an awkward angle. Try a different technique and actually push it through. That was the ticket. So that should be free now. Time to remove these bolts. Row, row. However, before I do that, I need to show you this. Should I name to the channel Finding Problems rather than Finding Seconds? So it looks like there is an oil leak. For some reason, I get more oil leaks on German cars than anything else. Now I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure this is the case, that what is common on these are like valve cover gaskets. So I'm hoping it's that, because I can smell an ever such a slight burn when I drive it, like it's hitting the exhaust. And rather than being in the center, it is coming down the sides. So something to investigate. Probably won't be able to take care of that today, or at least I know I won't. But there is that, which I'm gonna have to keep an eye on. Use a big bar when you're doing this. Wonder if they should be replaced. So I'm gonna leave this one in, and it looks like, at least on this side, there's a 10 millimeter holding it in. So with those out of the way, should just be able to remove this. So my goal right now is to try and drain the pan before I undo the pan and release it of as much oil as possible, capturing it so I can actually measure it out like I normally do. Before you go ahead and drain the pan, it's worth making sure you can get the fill plug out. It's also a 10 millimeter Allen head. There's a little bit of oil coming out, which is where filling it to the correct level can get a bit tricky on this engine. Just plan to loosen it before I put the pan back up. Okay. Now this is very precarious. This goes everywhere, it's gonna be entertaining, right? Should have completely removed the fill plug, but I didn't wanna lose any oil. So I'm gonna do that now, so hopefully it will flow a little bit easier. There we go. No vacuum. I wonder how long I'm gonna to have to wait here. Do you know any jokes? What's ET short for? Because you've got little legs. <laughs> Sorry. Whilst that's draining, I'm gonna go ahead and actually loosen some of those pan bolts. So it looks like they're a T30. So I'm gonna make my life easier, but I'm gonna leave in two bolts, opposite one another, to support it. There are 15 in total. So before I actually remove the pan, I'm gonna go ahead and put the plug back in. This will get replaced. It's just no benefit really to leaving that draining anymore. It's now time to remove these two and you can see the pan's already wanting to come down. Hopefully I do not make another mess. Turns out it was still draining quite a lot. If I'd left it much longer, that could have been messy. So this is the filter that needs to come out. And generally when you remove it, it's gonna release a little bit of back pressure again and even more fluid's gonna come out. So in order to catch it, I'm gonna go back to the jug and hopefully, whilst that's still draining, you need to remove the external filter and this is a 17. 
Need to catch the oil again as well. This filter comes out, just pulls. I'll show you this compared to the new filter in a minute. Might be surprised. So here's the pan. Need to remove the gasket because we're going to replace this, but then also clean everything up. And if you look, you start to see that all the metal that these magnets have collected. So all of this needs cleaning up and the gasket removed. I'm going to use a plastic lever to remove the gasket, or at least get it started. And that's really important to make sure this surface is as clean as it can be. Make sure there's no leaks. So I like to use isopropyl alcohol for a final wipe down. It frees up any contaminants and evaporates and it won't hurt any painted surface like this. Pretty much ready to go. Just need to do the same to the actual transmission now as well, the mating surface. You have to be a little bit more careful here because you've actually got some dirt and contamination that you could push in to the transmission. Make sure you're wiping out, not in. Everything's ready to go back together though, so time for the new internal filter. In order to get the new filter ready to go into the car, there is this locating pin and there is a gasket that sits around the bottom. So that goes that around there like that. I'm gonna take a little bit of the old oil just to help lubricate this gasket to go in. Shouldn't need much. And here you can see where that locating pin is actually gonna go into. So with the filter ready to go, it offers up to the front, slides forward and in, So it's time for the new gasket. Everything's been cleaned up. Make sure it goes around the right way, but then also the dowels that we removed earlier need to make sure they go in the right holes. Next, we need to replace the gasket on the external filter. Use a small pick to get underneath, take it off, take the new gasket, and it just slides on down. Make sure it's in the channel this is ready to go back on with the new filter. Before I put it in, this is the difference between the new filter and the old filter. Isn't that crazy? First, we're going to take the filter and just slide it into the housing. Push it and it should click. Next, just going to take another small bit of oil and just lubricate the O-ring. Then the housing is ready to go back on. And the housing has these safety notches, so you want to tighten it until the last one's engaged. That's it, that is tight, that is done. With the filters done, it's now time to take the pan and get it located into place. I'm gonna hold it up there with just a couple of fasteners. So these are new. So now I can go ahead and do all the rest. And what I'm gonna do is just do it alternating side to side. I'm not gonna tighten them yet, just gonna get them all finger tight. Because the goal is still to make sure everything is aligned. Now I'm going to sneak up to 10 newton meters in a very similar cross pattern. Okay, so there was some spillage, but not a lot. So I'm going to measure this now, and at least I understand how much I should be putting in. I'm actually going to measure the temperature, so I have OBD11, which will allow me to measure the temperature of the transmission, because effectively what you need to do is run the engine, get the transmission up to temperature, and only when it's up to temperature do you fill it up all the way whilst the engine's running. Now this is failing. Two liters. Turns out it's a little bit full. Need to get a better pan. Making a right old mess here, Adam. Need to mop that up so I don't measure it twice. 
Four litres. This pan's rubbish. 5.3 litres. 100 millilitres. So 5.4 litres. I'm going to guess I spilt at least 100 millilitres in various different places and still in filters. So in order to fill the transmission, I'm actually going to use the Mitivac. This is a Mitivac Fluid Evacuator Plus. So you can actually ev evacuate fluid as well as fill. Um, I really like it because it just allows you to put the volume of fluid you want in here, stick the tube in the hole, pump away, and there you go, job done. So we took just over five litres out. I'm going to put six litres in here. I've already flushed this because I've had other fluids in here at one point. So I've flushed it with brake cleaner before. I've also flushed at least 100 mil through here so I know all the tubes are good. And I'll flush another couple of hundred mil once uh, I get it up and running. Making a mess today. All right, try not to make a mess with this one. See, I can do it. Last one. So with that full, you can put the cork back in, crank it down. Now I'm just gonna get rid of a couple of hundred milliliters. The way I do it is I've got it on around here. There's evacuate and there's pressurize or fill. So I've got it on the fill setting. I'm gonna pump it a couple of times, just get a couple of hundred milliliters out there and then either pull the release or switch it the other way so that it stops. That's the plan at least. Here we go. And see it flowing. Don't want to lose much. Perfect. So hopefully now this is the easy bit. Make sure the tube goes in the hole. And we can begin filling. The amount of transmissions I've filled by having to use hand pumps or others. It's just a nightmare sometimes. You're in an awkward position under a car. Now admittedly, okay, there's a lift here. But even without a lift, these pumps are amazing. Hands off at this point. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be very close to being done because we're at five liters any moment now. Here it is. So now we put the drain plug in, start the car. Drain plug, fill plug. Now we put the fill plug in, start the car. No leaks, that's nice. Okay, so we need to get the car down because we need to run it the engine at idle speed to be able to check that oil level. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the accessories on. We have OBD11 plugged into the OBD2 port and we're gonna check the temperature of the transmission. Okay, with OBD11, what you do is you basically go back to the vehicle and you say, go to control units. We want to look at the transmission. So under transmission, you look at live data and then you can say, what do you want to look at? So we want to look at temperature, transmission fluid temperature. So we can see the live transmission data is saying that it's 42 C. We want that between 30 and 50. So I think we're good, but we're gonna to have to start the engine, get the car up in the air fairly quickly to be able to test that level. So I'm gonna put this over on the side. Still at 43, might have time. Okay, so nothing's coming out, which means I have to fill it up a little bit more. It goes in. 44C, come on. So we've got to fill it like this until it overflows. Oh, there it is.
45C, I think we made it. So now we need to go through and do the checking procedure. This is it, the final test. Need to do it between 30 and 50, and a small amount of fluid should come out if everything has gone correctly. But I need to hold it in each gear for two seconds. So with the car running, we're gonna put it into each gear for two seconds with a foot on the brake. Forty six C, forty seven C. Come on, Adam. Small amount of fluid. Perfect. I'll worry about talking this in a minute. And the final temperature was forty seven. Look at that. Okay, so final talk, 45 Newton meters on the drain and 45 Newton meters on the fill. Clean it all up and put it all back together. No leaks. That's a relief. It's time for the brace to go back in. This is 90 Newton meters plus 135 degrees. So this isn't to talk then this is just to run them up and I'll do the electrical connections in a minute. So on setting one. So these must be torque to yield. So it's 90 Newton meters plus 135. I'm gonna get close. I don't want to overdo it and break them. Slippery floor. I've got no traction. And we're done. I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Tired, huh? I'm tired of this. <laughs>